Hi everybody, this video is going to give you the remaining functions of a chase car. These are the functions that I haven't communicated in the first video. So here is the second part with all the remaining functions that a chase car has to do. Okay. The first clip I'm going to show you is a very wide load. It's actually a super load. Uh, you will see there is a red uh, car right in front of the chase car. That red car contains a steerman. For the purposes of this video, you can just ignore that car. Okay. The main point is the chase car is in common with the tracker. And what I want to show you is this uh, clip is that uh, the chase has to keep the tracker informed as to what is happening with the back of his trailer because the trucker can't see back there. The chase car can see it and he has to keep the trucker informed about it. So there you go. Okay, Bill, look good around that turn. You're good back here. Alrighty, I gotta get over to the left to make this right hand corner. There's gonna be a bunch of islands, I'm gonna be creeping. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you this clip again, but this time let's assume this is a, a load that is, you know, longer. Uh, and uh, let's assume that it's coming close to the stop sign that's on the left. As you have seen uh, in the video, there is a stop sign to the left and there is actually one on the right as well. So. Uh, if this load would have been longer, it would have come closer to the stop sign and the tracker would have to be, have, would, would, would need to know about it. In this case, the, the chase car didn't talk about it because it wasn't a point of any danger. Okay, but, so let's assume this would be a longer load and it would come closer to the stop sign and you would have to inform the trucker. How is that done? 10 feet to the stop sign. Five feet to the stop sign, and you cleared the curve. Okay, so now there could be also another scenario, which is that the load is so long that it would, like a blade, for example, that it could swing out in the back and hit that stop sign, which is on the right. What you do in that case is the same that you would do, which I just showed you, with a stop sign on the left. You just inform him how close the load is to the stop sign, and when it clears the stop sign. And if it doesn't clear it, you say stop. And you say that very loud and very clear. So they hit the brake and then you guys can figure out how to get around it. You know, he might have to back up, etc. There's different solutions he has available to do this, but you are the one who calls the shots on this. And that's why it is important to know that. There's one thing I forgot to tell you, which I should have told you right in the beginning of the video. I'm going to tell you now before we get to the next video clip, but this is watch this entire video until the very end because at the very end i'm telling you a very important datum that is vital to know for a chase car driver okay so please stay with me on this to the very end okay so now let's watch the next video clip it's pretty self-explanatory okay here we go Looking all right so far. You're clear. Still clear. Stop me before I go up on the curb. up on the curb, you got about six inches. Good to go back. Now I'm back, you got another three feet. Two, one, all right, right there. Looking now. 
Go ahead, I'm watching your tires. So far, so good. I'll let you know when you're getting close. You're good on that cement block in the road there, in the side. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm waiting for him to tell me when you're going to get off the curb here. Let me know when he's ready to come off the curb. All right, hold on. Watch that car coming up on your left. Going over, you're going over nicely. Rocks are helping beautifully. You're off. Come on out, Paul. Got one car squeezing past you. Got that left lane. Got a couple of flyers coming up. Grab that left lane. Okay, Billy, looking good on your left. On the right. In the next clip, we're going to have a long load, and in that case, there is a high pull driving ahead of the load and a chase in the back. Okay, so the reason I showed you the last example is so you could see uh, that the chase tells the trucker a uh, barricade, an impediment, a dangerous point has been cleared. In that case, and that happens quite often, the front car finds a point of hazard or danger, like in that case, a low hanging wire. So he calls it out, the trucker takes action based on this. And then the chase is telling the trucker when he cleared that obstacle. Okay, so you can clearly hear this. Now, this could be the same for uh, a, a skinny bridge, for example. The, the front car, the lead car, the high pole, whatever is calling on a skinny bridge. And uh, the truck then goes over the skinny bridge. And the moment the truck has passed the skinny bridge, the chase car says, cleared the bridge. You know, it's very important for the tracker to note that it cleared and it is out of the danger zone. That's why I show you that particular piece. Okay, now we have another one. Okay, so the following thing I'm going to show you is what is the view of a tracker to the back of his trailer in an oversized load? And this is something that's very important to know for a chase car. The dark spot here and I'm sorry for this crude drawing, but I didn't have any, I'm not a fancy designer, I'm actually no designer at all. So what I'm gonna show you here is the dark spot here, this is the head of the trucker, inside the, the trucker cabin, okay? This is the front where the engine sits, this is the, uh, the rear of the, the, the semi-truck, and then this is the oversized load. Now, what you see here, and here are the mirrors of the trucker. So he sits in there and he looks in that mirror and he looks in that mirror to see something what's behind him, okay? Now, what you see here is the view from his left mirror. You see, and he can see here and he can see about up to here. He does not see anything that's happening here or here because you can see on, on this side too, he just sees nothing, literally nothing. So now you as a chase car, you you sit you sit kind of back here, okay? Let's say this is your car here. You can see from here, from the back, what's happening. You know, 
in, for example, if he does this turn now, let's see, he's, he's doing a left turn here. Okay, he's going on a road on a left turn. So now you can just envision how this load is going to turn. You know, this, this, this back part here is always going to go off track. In other words, the truck is going to make a line like this and the trailer is going to make a line like that. You see, it's going to go, it's going to turn more to the inside than what he's actually steering in the front. So if anything is sitting here, you know, like let's say a traffic sign is sitting here. So he's now pulling over here and the load is then coming over this way. So by the time this thing gets come, comes to this point here, it's going to hit that traffic sign here or that pole or, you know, a light post, anything, another car. So you sit back here and then you tell him you're coming close to this here because he doesn't see. He doesn't see. All right. Now, here's another important datum. Here is a trucker. This is his right window, this is his left window. So, now I'm gonna draw another view in here. And this is, when he looks out that window, he has about that much view. That's what he can see. Okay. He does not see anything that's, for example, let's say, uh, you know, this is a, a, a corner and um, there is a car coming on here, you know, let's say a car is coming here. He, this is another car coming here, this way, okay. He is not going to see that car because the mirror goes here. His view from the window goes here. You see that? Unlike you, you know, in your in your pickup truck, in your minivan, in your normal car, you have a front view, you have a, ver a, a view out of your uh, right window and your left window, and you have a back window on the back passenger side on the right, and uh, you have a window that goes out the back. He does not have any of this. He can't see to the back. He can't see, he doesn't have here another window he, where he can look through here. He doesn't. He has only a view. You see how limited his view is in that moment? Wh once you know, you, you, you accept that datum, that he is not going to see more than that, uh, you will understand what you have to alert him to. This is also, you know, you find this often on, on roads that go like this. Um, you know, here's a road. And then there is an off ramp, an exit ramp from the from the highway. So it merges here. So when the truck comes in here, let's say this is the the semi, uh, this is oversized load. Again, he can look out here. He does not see what comes here. So you sit back here, but you can tell him, hey, there's a four wheeler coming on your right. Stop. Do you see that? That's a similar scenario. Both happen frequent. So you both, you have to be aware of both scenarios. Okay, so basically that's it. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned from it. This was part two of the chase car driver. And I think it's gonna be my final part. I just wanted to show you the basics that one has to uh, know before you jump in the game. And as a very important point is, start out as a chase. Don't do any lead, don't do anything else. Do, do chase, be a chase car driver until you really feel good about it. So there's a lot of trips available for chase. There is, uh, uh, it's a, a real, uh, a, a good way to start a business. And the other thing is you, you will drive with lead cars and you will learn from this what lead cars do. Okay, that's it for the video. If you liked it, subscribe, um, hey, leave a comment, ask me questions, whatever you want. See you in the next video.